What is up my friends? This is video number three on our series on understanding vacuum cleaners. We're talking specifications. Basically I decided to make this the series so that you can go out with this information, compare vacuum cleaners, make an informed buying decision so that you can find the best possible vacuum to suit your needs. In the last video we specifically talked about the motor and the three specs that correspond with it, volts, watts, and amps. If you haven't seen that video, I encourage you to go back and watch that video first so that this one makes a little bit more sense. This video is gonna be about suction and airflow and the three specifications that correspond thereof. Specifically, CFM, water lift, and air watts. Let's go. So CFM, this stands for cubic feet per minute. So as I mentioned before, when you power on a vacuum cleaner, it starts a motor, which then activates a fan, which causes the air pressure to decrease inside the vacuum cleaner, and then causes it to suck, which, continue, which causes a continuous airflow through that vacuum cleaner in the intake and out the exhaust. How much airflow is generated is your CFM rating. The dust and the debris get caught up in that airflow, which then carries it back to the canister, back to the bag. It tells you how much air is passing through that vacuum cleaner and how fast. So the higher that CFM number is, the better. Now, I want you to think for a moment, what could affect the airflow? The answer is resistance. What would cause the resistance, though? The answer to that is, filters, bags, anything inside the vacuum cleaner that that air is forced to pass through would cause resistance. So the CFM rating takes into account the power of the motor, right, creating that airflow, but also the resistance of the bag and the filters. This is why it's important that you keep your filters clean, which is just basic vacuum maintenance. When you have clogged filters, it causes an increased amount of resistance which then causes you to lose airflow. It causes that CFM rating to go down significantly. You ever had a vacuum cleaner that isn't working as well anymore? It just doesn't suck the way that it used to suck? Chances are if you clean those filters, it'll run like a champ once again. Water lift, also referred to as static lift. CFM is your airflow rating. We've established that. Water lift is your suction rating. I am going to do a demonstration for you, by the way, to show you the difference in the two. But let's talk about that water lift for a moment. It's typically rated in inches. So however many inches of water it can lift is your water lift rating. Now the way they do it is I want you to picture a clear, transparent tube. Maybe about this big around, okay? Right? About that big around. Just a clear, transparent tube. What they do is one end up here, they put the vacuum hose, and then the other end of the, uh, the tube, they submerge down in water, right? They seal that hose off the top to where there's zero airflow. It's completely sealed. It's pure suction. They flip the vacuum cleaner on, and however many inches it lifts that water, remember, zero airflow, just the suction. However many, however many inches it lifts that water is the water lift rating. It is the suction pressure that that motor can create. The motor's pulling power, if you will. So this is suction. See the mark? Suction doesn't pick up dirt and debris though. Allow me to demonstrate. See this tissue? I'm gonna stick this right here. I'm gonna completely seal this off. No magic tricks. Turn the vacuum cleaner on and, and how much you want to bet this tissue is still there after I turn it back off? Completely sealed, just suction. See the tissue? It's there because suction doesn't pick up dirt and debris. Instead, airflow is what picks up dirt and debris. So why do we need suction then? Well, the water lift suction rating is important because it is that motor's pulling power. It's the suction pressure that it generates. A higher water lift rating, the higher the number, the better. A higher water lift rating, the vacuum's gonna have an easier time lifting sand, grit, heavier soils 
from your carpet and your floors. It's also a good measurement of the vacuum's ability to deal with the resistance of airflow. As the bag fills, the filters start to load with fine little particles because the test is performed with zero airflow. So what types of numbers should you be looking for when you're out shopping for a vacuum cleaner? Well, for canister vacuum cleaners, look for a CFM of 100 or more and a water lift rating of 90 or more. For backpack vacuum cleaners, I like my CFM ratings to be around 120 and my water lift ratings to be 100 or more. But I use those backpack vacuum cleaners every day, so I'm really picky about my specs. For your upright vacuum cleaners, so your typical vacuum cleaner to use on carpets, right? Whether they have a bag or they don't have a bag, either way, the ratings can be a lot lower for those. 60 CFM or higher is what you should be looking for. The reason they can be a lot lower is because there's such little distance for the air and the debris to travel. I mean, here's your beater bar, you know, in the bag. Is like right here it's just it's very little distance so it pretty much makes water lift pointless you ain't got to look for a water lift rating just look for that CFM rating 60 or higher you'll be good to go the canister vacuum cleaners when they have those long hoses you know it's a lot further for the dirt and the air to travel so the ratings have to be a little bit higher so the last specification we're going to look at that you will run into are air watts. Now don't get confused, an air watt is not the same as a watt of electricity. What are air watts? Well, I told you that CFM is a rating of the vacuum cleaner's airflow isolated. Water lift is a measurement of the vacuum cleaner's suction isolated. Amps, watts, and volts are a measure of the motor's power isolated. Air watts are kind of the vacuum world's way of trying to measure suction, airflow, and power consumption all together. Everything all at once. You'll also hear air watts referred to as the vacuum's output power. It's basically a measurement of how many watts of electricity a vacuum uses to carry one unit of air through the entire vacuum. I'm not going to get much more detail than that because it's just going to confuse you and it's to be honest, it's not that important. For practical purposes, all you need to know is the same applies for this. The higher the number, the better. Dyson is very well known for giving you the air watt specification. In my opinion, CFM and water lift are the most important specifications to look for, followed by air watt after that. But I do give you this specification because you will run into it from time to time. Now I'm going to help you guys out and I'm going to go off on a little bit of a rant here. <laughs> if you're out shopping for a vacuum cleaner, and they only give you the watts or the amp specifications to compare. So they don't talk about CFM, they don't talk about water lift, no suction, no airflow, no air watts, nothing. All they give you is the watts and the amps. I wouldn't even consider buying that vacuum cleaner. In my opinion, it's laziness. All they're telling you is how powerful the motor is, but there's nothing there about actual practical performance. The greatest motor in the world with cheap housing and all kinds of leakage is going to be horrible. So move on if you find that. This is a result of years of marketing vacuum cleaners for their power, right? So amps, watts, horsepower, which is really old. Horsepower is really old. There's no need for me even to talk about that. No one uses that anymore. But the thing is, is don't confuse power with performance. Old manufacturers, they're stuck in these old ways. The most important specifications you should be looking for is number one, CFM, number two, water lift, and number three, air watts, okay? If you do get motor specifications, they should be secondary to those three as like a bonus. But you will run into this from time to time, so don't be surprised when you see it. This is one of my biggest frustrations. My thing is, if they're not, if they're lazy to provide you with some practical performance specifications, how lazy are they going to get with their design? Ask yourself that question. Now, I will tell you this. There are great vacuum cleaners out there that only give you power specifications but it's more of a gamble. One thing that will reduce that gamble a little bit is look at the warranty of the motor that they're touting, okay? A superior warranty is five to 10 years. So if they're offering a five to 10 year warranty, chances are it's gonna be a pretty good vacuum. Expensive as well. A prime example of this is the brand Mila. They make great vacuum cleaners, offer a seven year warranty, and a lot of times they only give you the watt specification. But I can tell you that those vacuum cleaners are indeed the bomb diggity. So there are some exceptions out there. So let's call that video number three. 
We'll let that information sink in a little bit, and we will continue uh, next time. Next time we'll talk a little bit more about some of the secondary specifications you need to look at that's going to determine the quality of the vacuum cleaners. I'll talk about why you should never buy cheap vacuums. And uh, that'll be that. So until next time, guys, thanks so much for checking this video out. If you liked it, give it a big claim of confidence. Thumbs up really helps us out. Also, if you want to take our relationship to the next level, drop me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Until then, I will see y'all in the next video. A few squirts to remove that dirt. If you can buy a bottle, you can clean too.